Hey there guys, it's Rick Uter here with Airgun Web, your home for old school Airgun reviews and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. We are back on the range. It's a beautiful day, a little breezy, but it's not going to matter for this gun. Can't wait to tell you all about it. All right, guys, before we get going, I want to remind you that we do have a Patreon channel, and we also have Airgun Army. We have the Officers Club. Now, if you guys want to have access to exclusive behind-the-scenes footage, or you want early access, ads-free content, then definitely check those out. I'll have links in the video description. Now, today's video is brought to you by Pyramid Air, and we have the Dragon Claw 2 here, guys. This is, if there was a gun that inspired me to get into air gunning, it was the Dragon Claw. I just remember seeing 50 caliber air gun back 15, 16 years ago, and I couldn't wrap my head around that. And then I had the privilege of actually getting to shoot one, and now I own one. And the fact that they've come out with a Mark II version, well, that's four, two version, is uh, pretty stinking cool. Now, the big change is power output. Now, back in the day, the Dragon Claw at 200 plus foot pounds was plenty. For some reason, you know, that was enough to do whatever we wanted to do. But as time changed and technology got better and guns started hitting 300, 400, 500, 700, 1,000 foot pounds in an air gun, all of a sudden, we think now that we have to have that to be useful. Well, truthfully, that's just not the case. If you know what you're doing, you've got good shot placement, and you actually understand the gun, your game, range, how all that works, you'd be very effective with 150 foot-pounds. But I get that more can sometimes be better. So when they came out with the Mark II, it gave us more. The, what it gives us more of is energy. And on paper, we're gonna find out today how close that the paper lines up to reality. They're talking 100 extra foot-pounds. So that's pretty cool. If we can go from 230 to 330, and they're saying up to 340 with 336 grain slugs, which is what we're shooting today, that's really impressive. And that does give you more margin for error, gives you maybe like if you're hunting hogs, big hogs can be hard to take down. Frankly, I would want power and energy if that's what you're hunting. So yeah, I see the advantage, but today we're going to find out just how well this does. Now, I'm going to be shooting steel targets today at 50 yards. The reason I'm shooting steel is I want you guys to actually see the energy on impact because paper doesn't show us that. And we've got nice fresh painted targets, so we're going to get you know, a pretty good idea of how this gun's grouping. I'll tell you that, um, well, let me get through some of the other stats, right? So it has a 500cc tube, so you get a good number of shots. I'm probably getting, well, I'm shooting five, six shots, and I'm still over, I still have room to go, right? So that's pretty good. Now, I'm, we, we do have a, you know, a nosedive on the power. So the first few shots are going to be your kill shots and then you've got some extras if you need them um, but just having you know six eight ten shots on tap at a big bore is pretty impressive so i like that fills to 3000 psi so you don't need 4500 to get that energy just a standard 3000 is going to do it for you the reason i like that is that if i'm out hunting let's say let's say i'm out in a deer stand or i'm, I'm hunting hogs and i'm and i'm there for hours and they keep coming back or whatever I could take a couple shots. If I want to top my gun off so I'm staying in that you know, optimal power range, I can have a little pony bottle with me in a backpack and top this off. If I had to, if I, this was a 4,500 PSI gun, am I gonna carry a compressor with me into my, my hunting stand? That's not practical. But this, I love the fact that it's 3,000 PSI. Gives you the, the max power at a lower pressure. For me, that's awesome. Take a little pony bottle, you can keep this topped off. So you're always at optimal if you're on an extended hunting trip. So I think that's pretty cool. It does have open sights. So for you guys that like to hunt with open sights, I, I'd like to, I just can't see very well. So I have this problem. Uh, if I try and shoot with open sights, as long as I'm five feet away, it's pretty good. Um, but if we're 150 feet away, like we are today, I'm gonna need a scope. So open sights if you want them but if you want to scope it, you can. It has 11 millimeter rail. Now, 
if you're gonna put like a big old hunting scope on this, try to get really close to the bore and do all that, you're gonna have to pull the sights and you still may have some interference with this mount. So be mindful of you know the size of your uh, objective and all that kind of fun stuff, how long the scope is. You know, you may have to, you may have to do a little research to see what's gonna be the best scope. So I'm using an Endurance 1 to 24 wide angle. This is actually a shotgun scope and I really like this scope for this application because it's got a one to four magnification. So at one power, if I need quick target acquisition, I'm in the woods, I need to get on target very quickly. I don't, I mean, I, it's, it's one to one, right? It's like a red dot in that sense. Uh, but if I need a little magnification, I got four power. Okay, what's cool about the reticle on this is it's got a circle that, it, that basically covers that target at 50 yards. You have a center point and then you have aim points down below it. So if you spend some time behind the trigger, you can actually figure out exactly where you need to aim based on your distance and your slug drop and all that kind of fun stuff. So it actually gives you some really good aim points that way. But I really like the fact that it's a one. So you have quick target acquisition, just like with a red dot, but you have four, which gives you some really good, enough zoom at 50 yards to be plenty accurate for hunting and what this gun can do. So I really do like it for that. And I like it that I didn't have to take the sight off. So it actually lines up really well for this platform. I really love the scope. I'll have links in the video description for all of this. Remember, if you're interested in any of this stuff, we'll have it over at Pyramid Air. So again, check the video description for all the links to the stuff. Okay, some other things we're gonna talk about before we get to the fun stuff of shooting. Um, they have done an upgrade to the cocking handle. I love the fact that this is not screwed in. It's just got a ball detent. If you notice there, there's a whole lot of meat there that grabs that bolt. So you have really positive uh, grip on this. It's, the other one had just like a little finger grab, which was okay, but this just makes it easier to cock. And it's got a good bit of cocking force. It's not too much, but it's got a good bit. And I think probably it's got a little bit more than factor than the like the first gen because it's got more power, right? So I'm guessing they opened the valve, hit the hit the valve a little harder, so heavier hammer spring, all that kind of fun stuff. So it's Got a good bit of energy, but it's not too much. And the fact that they've given you a better way to cock the gun really mitigates that. So I could not really tell a difference um, other than it was, I don't know, maybe a little easier to cock just because I can get more leverage on the bolt. So that's pretty cool. The trigger is sitting at, on paper, they say seven and a half pounds. I'd got better. I was like five pounds. Let me actually, I think five pounds, nine ounces is what I got. So better, it's not a match trigger and there's no adjustment. So just get used to it and you'll be fine. Um, yeah, this it's this is what I call a grip it and rip it gun. This is not a bench rest, 100 yard sub MOA match gun. This is a hunting air gun that looks beautiful, by the way. Um, I think the whole styling of this is just top notch. It has, hasn't changed in 15 plus years is still awesome so if it ain't broke don't fix it right so i do love the styling um but it, this is a this is a field hunting gun it's what it's designed to do um the stock has got a slightly raised cheek piece to favor right-handed shooters but i don't think lefties are going to have a problem with it uh let's see is there anything else we need to talk about before we do some shooting noise level it's loud uh, it's 116 in front of the gun and 100, well, almost 117 in front of the gun. It's 113 and some change behind the gun. I haven't found it to be too loud. Uh, and my wife who's helped me out here today, who's normally pretty sensitive to sound, uh, actually said, I don't think that's bad. So whatever the tenor of the noise or the characteristics of the volume of the sound, it's not like other big bore air guns that drive me to wear ear, ear protection. Should I? Probably. But that's besides the point. <laughs> I didn't find it that loud, but it does measure loud. So 117 up front and 113 is some change from the shooter's perspective. Uh, but I, I didn't find it annoying or problematic. Now, if you're out in front of it, yeah, I'm sure it's going to seem loud out there, but you're not going to be there anyway. Game's going to be there, right? So let's do some shooting. <clears throat> um, this is, I just topped it off. We're shooting today the 336 grain slugs. These are big, fat, honking slugs. There they are. Very fun, very cool. Very big chunks of lead. They're awesome. Um, and we're going to see what we're going to get. Uh, I know that my first shot, I'll turn my crony on here. I know that my first shots tend to go high 
and I don't know if I'm just overfilling it just slightly. I don't. I mean, I'm going by the gauge on the tank, not the gauge on the gun, but it looks like I'm in the right spot. But yeah, I don't know what the deal is there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a I'm going to take a shot and not aim for the target because it's always been high. That first one's been high, and then everything else has shot well. So I'm going to take a shot. And then I'm going to see what my pressure is, because I should have done that sooner. And then going forward, I'm just going to fill to that pressure. Now, this is an unregulated gun, so, and your gun may be slightly different. It, that's just the way it works with these. So you may need to be 2850, and maybe I need to be 2950. I mean, you're going to have to sort that out on your end. So as you're shooting, you're getting some experience with the gun. If you're like your first shot's high and left, but then you've got three shots dead center, well, let's find out what the pressure is for those three shots dead center and then fill your gun to that pressure and you're like you're good to go, right? So I'm going to take a first shot. That'll kind of give us our max power, all right? And then we're going to put uh, some lead on that steel target and see where we're hitting. Okay, I'm going to shoot a dirt bank and let's see what we get for a velocity registry here. We are connected. Uh, yeah, no, we're all set. Home. Let's see, did they change this? No, I'm all set here. There we go. Here we go, first shot. 700. <laughs> okay, I love it when things overperform. <laughs> 368.7 foot pounds. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, that's, I mean, the original topped at about 230, guys. So we're at 370, and let's just say. Uh, yeah. All right, now let's shoot some steel. We're going to keep the crony running. <clears throat> um, and I was talking about the hammer. It's got two positions, low power and high power. We're going to shoot all of these on high power. Um, when we shoot the round ball, just for reference, uh, I'll put a couple down range with high power and then I'll do low power, you'll see the difference. Okay. All right, before we take our shot, we put on safe here. Let's take a look, see where our pressure's at. All right, I am at 120, that's 200. That's bar, one, two, three, four. So I'm about at 100. An 80 bar, 183 bar ish. It's not a really good gauge. Um, so if I were to fill to like maybe 190, I might be in a good spot so that my first shot's good to go. But that's something I would do. Like if I was gonna, geez, this could be my hunting gun, then I would go and I would do that and I would verify it and I would, you know, over and over and over make sure that I could fill it to a particular pressure and I'm gonna get this consistent results. That's what I would do. But for now, Let's go ahead and take some shots here. And again, every gun's going to be a little bit different, so you have to do your own homework. Just let you know. Okay. Uh, we are on at 50. Let's take a shot here. Uh, safety. 682. A little high. Let's see if it comes down a little bit. Still may have been a little bit high. 682, 347, we're still, so the first two shots are higher than what they say in the paperwork on the website, Lyle. I love it when guns overperform, right? All right, here we go. Second shot. No, nope, they're just. 63. Uh, they're touching, I just need to adjust my scope down a little bit. That's two shots, so if I was hunting, other than need to adjust my scope, uh, we got two shots that are touching, and it went from 347 to 328. So, pretty doggone good. Let's take another shot. 640. Okay, that one we finally dropped. Uh, and that was 305. Let's take another shot. That one really kind of went sideways. I think what we might want to do. I might go top this off to where I think we need to start pressure-wise. Paint that target, we'll do another group. Okay, and... 600. Okay. 15. So now we're sort of down in the center of the target. Let's see where we are pressure-wise. I got another shot. 
on tap here. Let's do one more. That is, we really dropped, 282 uh, foot pounds. Okay. One more. Let's see where that puts us. Because maybe what I do is I change my aim point a bit. Oh yeah, we're dropping hard. Okay, so the first couple shots, so now we're down below with the crony won't read it. Okay, so the first few shots are like the good shots. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go top this off and I'll ask my wife to go paint that target. We'll leave all the cameras rolling. And I'm gonna try and take three shots off the top of the fill and put them in the center of the target. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. And we're gonna check our pressure. So let me go fill this up and we'll be right back. But I'll tell you from that, target at least the first two shots that we got were shots touching to me that's all I need to go hunt with I'm just going to dial those into center and I'd be good to go all right so I'll let her go paint that target and I'll go fill the gun we'll be right back been filling the 3000 psi and what I did this time is I just filled to 200 bar which is like uh, 2,900, so just a little bit under 3,000. I am going to aim, I was aiming dead center. I am gonna aim just a little bit low on the target, and let's see where we hit. And I'm not gonna, not gonna clear the first shot, we're just gonna go for it, and let's see what we got here. <sighs> yeah, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> We didn't register, no! I wanted that, oh, it wasn't connected, son of a gun. Ugh, okay. I hate when I do that, okay. Same aim point. Oh, so the first one would have been more. <laughs> a seven seven, a 373.6. Let's see where the third shot goes. So, what I would do, if I can get three shots, which is all I really want out of a hunting gun, really two is good enough. If I can get three, that's bonus. We're getting a bonus round now. Um, but those are absolute kill shots. They were 50 yards out, guys. Um, ideally, I would want to be 50 yard max um, with this. Um, but that's, that's a good shot. I mean, if I was hunting a deer, uh, I, that could be vitals, easily vital shot, uh, no problem. And these big old heavy slugs are just dropping the power, are bringing the power. All right, same hold, same position. Let's take another shot here. All right, that dropped a little bit. All right, so that shot dropped. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to get two, like, good, good shots. And maybe that third shot, I need to aim a little bit higher. All right, I'm gonna do a little adjustment now because I just I'm curious. Let's see where we are pressure-wise. Um, we are at 20, 40, 60, 160 bar. All right. And I am going to go from that hold to this hold. 600. Oh, a little higher. All right, I'm chasing it, I'm gonna stop. Um, yeah, obviously, for me to really know what this gun's gonna do from shot to shot shot, I need to spend some time with it. And uh, yeah, I might have time to do that, but Pyramid Air also may want it back, so we'll see. Um, we'll see if they're interested in me kind of figuring that whole shot curve out. I'll ask if that's what they uh, would like me to do. And if, hey, if you guys want me to do it, let me know. It'll give me some ammo to talk to them and say, hey, do you want me to keep working with this? So um, yeah, I am, from a hunting perspective, knowing that I can put two shots on target basically where I need them to be, off, off a full fill, that's what I needed to know. Um, I would need to spend a little time if I wanna try to get three, four, five shots in that group. Yeah, I'm gonna have to spend some time. Um, but anyway, we know that with the 336s, yeah, this thing will absolutely do it. Guys, I, I still have a soft spot in my heart for this gun. It is the gun that just, I don't know, it, I was, I, um, the words aren't coming but it is the gun that just inspired. There we go. It's the gun that inspired me to pursue air guns as like a legitimate hunting, shooting discipline because 
I remember the 177 little things you buy as a kid and then seeing 50 cal air gun on the Pyramid Air website and reading Tom Gaylord's blogs and going, wow, I had no idea this stuff was real. And then owning one, shooting one and then owning one and then now seeing the progression where they're taking it to being a more viable hunting option, that's very exciting to me. It has the accuracy. It has more than an extra 100 foot-pounds in, in our test, but maybe 140 foot-pounds more given what we're getting here, which to me is, yeah, move in the right direction. It still looks great. I'm glad they kept the styling because to me, the Dragon Claw wouldn't be the Dragon Claw if you kind of like did a whole bunch of weird stuff to it. I think it looks great the way it is. But that's going to be it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. So I'm going to reach out to Pyramid Air to see if they'll let me hold on to this and really ask them if they'll let me do a hunting tutorial like knowing how, how to know uh, how to know your hunting air gun you know where's it gonna, where's it going to hit in the shot curve and really kind of work through that process I think that would be really useful on a gun like this because yeah that's how you're going to get the most out of it and have the most success in the field so I'm going to ask them we'll see if they need it back then we'll, we'll send it back but this is a good example of where the Patreon page and also the Officers Club over at Aragon Army become important because with your support there, then we could just buy it and then do whatever we want to with it. So that's what those uh, pagers are for. And so take a, take a look at them. If you guys want to help us out that way, we'd really appreciate it. And links for that will be in the video description. But for now, guys, that's going to be it. My name is Rick Utzer here with Airgun Web, your home for old school airgun reviews. And where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Thanks so much for watching.